information you need. Welcome back. It's the Talk Black Radio Show here on Amiga FM. We have had a very spirited break. So while you all was listening to the messages, we've been talking about everything under the sun. And I've literally had to hold back before we actually finished talking the whole show before we got back to you. So I'm here with my guest, uh, Katie, for, who is our qualified social worker is with us, who actually works in supported housing with many of our young people. I have Tafadzwa Shakara Bandaka, the illustrious talk he's a spoken word poet he's a teacher he's an educator a mentor and i'll leave for other things besides and just a humble all-around good breader and say. as ever brother david and brother trevor are here with me hit me with the research keeping me up to date so what are we talking about this half guys we're going to continue with um the gender fluidity which i have got to tell you i'm still strategy oh see that's what i'm saying to you. it's just too many things i'm still struggling with gender neutrality but they tried to help me understand in the break meaning there is neither no male nor female which seems a little bit difficult because we have different plumbing anyway um also we're gonna get into that's an interesting euphemism yeah isn't it, isn't it? Also, also we want to, i want to talk about this fostering thing in fact hit me with that Jeff. The, the situation with the fostering okay um so basically uh, a couple of weeks ago the daily mail and the times newspapers published a story about a five-year-old christian girl who had been forced into foster care of a muslim family so apparently this white christian child was left distressed after she was sent to live with a family which didn't speak english which you know denied her her cross um, she was obviously a very religious five year old yeah. um, was denied her cross <laughs> um, banned her from eating her favourite food which sp spaghetti carbonara because it had bacon did, in it think, did they ban her or did they just this, not cook this, it <laughs> <laughs> did they ban her this, from eating this was it in the, this was in the stories okay, right? go, go. and then it basically what it was inferring was that this white girl's identity was being erased and that the Tower Hamlets Council where she which, which was over it basically were unwilling to confront religious in tolerance and let it happen so there was a major outcry you know how because it's in the national press now right isn't it? you know how muslims are perceived and how that cult you know people talk about the culture so there was major outroar there was mps calling for a major inquiry lots of talk on social media people getting upset this and that and then in a follow-up story the times then reported that um, the judge had intervened and sent the little girl to live with her grandmother like you know for all of our noise and stuff we've saved the day wherever okay it turned out a lot of that wasn't true so basically it, this girl actually comes from a Mus muslim family that's her, her her heritage actually so she's not a christian no i mean the family are muslim non-practicing but they come from a muslim background so okay. it's not a foreign concept yes. to her the family she was with when she was in care actually speak english Obviously, that's actually a requirement to actually yeah, be... Adopt, like, yeah. how can I turn up speaking Spanish or <laughs> yeah, Arabic yeah, yeah. and say I'm going <laughs> to... <Okay. laughs> Give me one. Yeah. Like, who does that? Right. Yeah. Pourquoi? So, yeah, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and what had happened was when they were criticising the council, it turned out the council had intended to actually place her with the grandma but needed to basically do some checks so they needed to place her somewhere else while the grandma was being checked out yep. and they actually in that time they sent a court appointed guardian to go and um, investigate the birth mother's complaints about where she was staying and they found there was no issues whatsoever so total non-story really mm -hmm. but it was the fact that they decided to actually put that out and the Daily Mail you might expect it from the Times is like kind of like a you get me suit and tie high level kind of owned paper. by whom mr murder okie dokie okie okie dokie there yeah. we go so i mean at the end of the day regardless of whom the the media is used how the media is used they just let that go where it go if they decided to they could put that out in the guardian the next day or whatever but you know it was what? put Stop. out in the national press right and this is the, the point is that was put out in the national press a lot of the time when these headlines are put out the retractions no one hears that no so the actual truth of the story even though it's been it's gone out different places it's not the same as the huge sensationalism that was went out before it yes and so to me what it was making me question is like what's the agenda here like why would you actually put that story out and the last one i'm going to say before we just open it out is the guy who wrote that article he actually put out the story on you know these muslim gangs yeah 
um, he had, and grooming these children. It was actually the same author. He said he got a report and he felt it was pub- public needed to know, blah, 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 blah. So it's like, uh, to me, it was like, I understand this. Why do they never think the public need to know when the retraction comes? Like, we, we had Kay here last week and she's dragged through the press for whatever. Mm. Then she's found it's totally exonerated in court. Mm. The public don't need mm. to know that. Like, anyone who, who has proven that's their mm. MO, MO yeah. has no business telling you what the public needs or doesn't need. Mm. Katie, what do you think? Um, what do I think? I think that, um, as we already are aware Muslims are scapegoated in the media mm. um, by them publishing that story though they only put fault on themselves because I've worked on a fostering panel before and as you said the recommendations to be a foster carer there has to be at least one parent that speaks fluent English mm. not only speaks it but also reads and writes it as well um, because it, you know you need to make records and things like that for the children and read information mm. um, so that could have never have happened um, Furthermore, um, this situation is not a high-level situation in comparison to when, in the in one prison up north, I think it was um, in in Northumbria somewhere near Newcastle, they placed a Muslim young male in the prison cell with a white racist person known that he's a racist person and that white person killed the Muslim boy I remember that, oh, I remember that, yeah, you remember I remember that, remember that story, story. Yeah. yeah so again even if the situation was true with the young girl being placed with a um, non-Christian family the the blame goes back to the state. The blame's not on the individuals. It shouldn't be on the foster carers. It should be with those who placed it, placed mm. the young. But I think what they were trying to do with it was an attack on the whole. Was and it's it's. I think to be honest, mm. um, I think this is an attack on white people's psyche. When you're doing that, you're actually attacking Caucasians to force them. You know, we talked about planting yeah. the seeds. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when they talk about these so-called. Um, right wing right white groups mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're not the most intelligent well rounded well studied individuals mm-hmm. so they'll get their information via this so if you have a conversation and they go what about these white girls who can't wear their cross and don't mm-hmm. get any carbonara <laughs> <laughs> because that's what you're taught but if you're not that's what they're giving I, sometimes I know this, this may be a bit controversial here for the talk black radio show <laughs> but sometimes I think white folks are victims too can I ask a question, Laura? Yeah. Is bacon an article of Christian faith? No. Okay. Let's just make it short. I'm, I'm confused about oh No, 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 no. Go on, go on. Because, because it's up for debate. Go oh, on. It? Yeah, right, go ahead. Okay. Because you might go on in a Leviticus and yes. come back with the idea that perhaps it is um, an article of the Christian faith. Go ahead, break it down for well, me. Maybe if depending on who you are, remember because as I understand, the Old Testament forbids the eating of of of, of pork. The book of Leviticus. But then there was that. the. That, but that's what I'm saying. So it's not an article of Christianity. No, but so the thing is, the Christians have a thing where they say there's a part in the New Testament right. yes. where Peter is talking and he says, "Yeah, um, no, that's all good." He had my, a dream my, and all the meat was good to eat. Th- my point is, yes, I'm trying to figure out how this child's inability or lack of capacity to eat pork. Yes offends Christian sensibility <laughs> I, I, I'm trying no, to figure out like, you know what it was and that was <laughs> actually saying? there there was no proof of that but I think they put it in the story to heighten it so it says so oh, everyday right. white people oh, see, like we're, we're getting caught in their story here because remember no, I'm, I'm they had, no no I'm going to come yeah, back to you yeah. I'm going to come back to you because yeah. we're getting caught in their story because go back a little bit and yeah. I think this this more tells you about the tone of what's being said here right. it's less a biblical issue because right. yes. they, they, yeah. they couldn't care less yeah. about Christ however a little while ago do you remember there was um, um, there was a big hoo-ha mm-hmm. because children were being given halal meat at school yes. yeah. so like we couldn't tell the difference between the one halal sausage and the non-halal yeah, sausage yeah. when you yeah, yeah. was eating yeah. but we heard yeah. that there was a label in the bin that said halal yeah. now you're poisoning our children with yeah. the meat but they didn't yeah. really understand look, halal meaning yeah. that it's um, that we it, oh, right, that we said a prayer way. over the beast yeah, 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 yeah. we said a prayer <laughs> yeah, yeah, over yeah. the condemned life <laughs> and then we tried our best to kill it you baby really, yeah. what you're actually saying is no we want the one that we murder yeah, <laughs> give, yeah, me the, yeah, yeah. give me the one that we stun well, with I, the gun fit, to, yeah. <laughs> and jab with the teeth <laughs> <laughs> two, two quick things there yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was 
listening to um to, to London's lead convers no sorry leading Britain's conversation LBC. yeah yeah a, a few a few months ago and they had this whole conversation about the fact that because somebody published some news report about how um inhumane actually halal butchering actually is mm. for the animals and there was a big debate around this thing and and it like again you, what you're talking about in terms of people just not being informed it was really it was really startling how stupid that that discussion <laughs> that, that conversation actually was um and uh, not to say that these things don't matter but there's people just don't know and they've got bigger opinions of things that they just, they, they just yeah. don't know about yeah um, but my my yeah. background not that and i have to say this as a disclaimer for the show management yes. is local yes not that we are vouching for every halal butchery in the no, of course not. Because course we not. don't know how people do what they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. what it is is there's a lines are being drawn yes. with very little information along um, emotional, um, I'm sorry, among emotional lines mm -hmm. that are being used to spread propaganda and and move people to, um, I say, discriminate without information. I, I just never knew how concerned the British public were about how their meat gets killed. I just was not aware of it. <laughs> that was a, it's that's a big, yeah, exactly. It's on the plate. You know what I'm saying? People are eating horse They're meat. They're a nation of animal like, lovers. Let me not hear anything else. Exactly. <laughs> when it comes to, no, one more thing is here. Because um, my, my par both my parents, um, well, one was a social worker, my father. And my mother, my, my mother is a social worker. Brother Leader was a social worker. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Foster adoption. Serious? Yeah. Um, right. And so he was, um, so in the 80s, like black social workers had worked very hard to make, ensure same race um, adoption placements. It was a, yeah. it's a lot of work. They went a through lot a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, like research was done and them kind of things there throughout the nineties and up, up until into, into the two thousands. Now, um, the, they, the government have tried to reverse and push back those laws. Yes, um, we're using all kind of different. You know, a loving parent is all that matters. Do you know um, why black parents are not coming forward? Go ahead. Do you know why? And I'm saying this having actually gone through mm -hmm. that. Um, skills to foster training and actually looking mm. um, at even getting into it. Yes. When you go for fostering as a black um, family, mm -hmm. you actually have to demonstrate how not black you are yes. to get a black child. Right, right, if you right. go now right. and demonstrate, I remember like one of the things that I put in my application, mm -hmm. it said like, well, how do you see yourself? So like, your identity. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm a black man. I'm the the children. My parents come from mm -hmm. the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and we're the descendants of slaves. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> not really feeling your views on identity. <laughs> <laughs> what? The, like, I, I'm thinking, what else could I have said? You know, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. proud British man. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. enjoyed. That, sorry, that that was the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> that was Where's the that church is my yeah, here. Yeah, right. there you go. Yeah, that yeah, was the yeah. correct answer. I watch her about that the Like unless you're happy, yes. if you're if you're aware, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a very, very difficult minefield to get through. So Definitely. to me, most of it is you've put this on the statues. Mm -hmm. Then you've made secret plans mm -hmm. with your social workers and whatever. And there's a black social worker that was doing my mm -hmm. application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you um, make it so through your things that they have to come a certain way. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to see. He seems a little too strong. He seems a little too militant. Did the man speak or did he hide in the kitchen while mm -hmm. the woman did all the talking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the kind of black men we like to see mm -hmm. getting involved in fostering. Anything other than that, slightly dangerous. Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that looking at Katie, but I know it's not you. <laughs> Katie's on the show because she understands what it is to talk black and be black. So welcome. <laughs> Um, I remember when um, I remember when I was going through a fostering assessment mm -hmm. and the social worker that come she was a white lady I told her that I just got back from Uganda and she said to me oh Uganda that's my country <laughs> I said oh it's your country how is that then she said oh well I went to school there and I lived there and that's where I'm from mm -hmm. so I said okay but you don't look Ugandan <laughs> she said oh no my father um, he owned some land out there and some businesses so I was like hmm oh okay and I just felt that it was so strange for her to feel so comfortable a white woman trying to tell me that she's a Ugandan lady and that's her country when in fact she lived there for a small period of time probably doesn't even know what it looks like now and 
probably doesn't know anybody there that she could call her friend or her relative and I find that highly rude she felt so proud to be like yeah I'm from there but she, you she, mean your, your fathers were slave masters yeah. there you should have asked her if she was there at the time of Idi Amin <laughs> probably could have helped you with your travel document <laughs> and, and, your, and your identity issues yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a very serious thing but I, I just find it very interesting that in, in the era whereby the, the government is moving head fast on this yeah. agenda yeah. for ensuring as far as I'm concerned that black children um, don't end up with black families yep. that they are at the same time concerned about one local Christian so supposedly Christian white girl uh, uh, and Muslims you know what I'm saying so it's something but if, if we're organised and we're saying it's something that we can use and based on what you just said because I know a number of stories like that you know mm. I think that um, uh, among black organisations in the quote unquote conscious community yes. we need to do some research mm -hmm. just among people in the quote unquote conscious community uh, of stories having encountering having encountered the fostering and adoption system them because yeah. I know so many people that have tried to go for fostering adoption and have been rejected. And we get yeah. terrible That's numbers. It. They come back and go, well, you see, black people Don't. aren't adopting or yeah. won't get involved in fostering. Yeah. That's in all but the reports. The, right. So all the reports say this. It's the same with, um, and I've got a brother coming, um, David from Action in the Community and mm -hmm. fatherfigure.org mm -hmm. to just talk about this subject in a couple of weeks. But mm -hmm. you've got this thing about absent fathers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it never tells you how they set rules in motion mm -hmm. to see fathers are absent mm -hmm. it just yes. puts out the statistics yeah. and says oh these are all absent fathers and as sure. I was saying last week I, ju I, I know so many fathers like yes. everyone I know who's got a child is responsible yeah, towards yeah, yeah. that child. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, mm. but the numbers just don't pan no, out. With it's, actual it goes facts back to the, it's the impact. So mm. even when you look at this story, a lot of the time, it's the the, the headline is really the smoke screen. It's what they're when you talked about inception. It's like what they're trying to plant. Inside. So when they, so when you're talking about the statistics being trotted out about black fathers, it's to say to black women, black men is what list. You, you, you have a baby yeah, with black yeah. men, expect him to yeah. go walk about. That's and it's that, that seed is and growing. It's, yeah, and that seed doesn't that's mean. It's germinated mm. like you look around that's what people expect and, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because they planted the idea in our heads mm -hmm. and now it's now it's everywhere mm -hmm. Do you know what i'm saying that's that's how we're seeing it it first started with black women you're ind independent enough to be without a man yeah and your man's rubbish he can't do this he can't do that 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 fooled women into believing that was true yeah so they got rid of their men their men obviously become detached from the family yeah and then feels emotionally distraught which affects his behavior his you know there was a wicked to picture work. um on facebook where it had a man walking out the door then it had a black woman and she was saying i don't need no man yeah. so the black man was walking out the door with his things then mm -hmm. her daughter was next to her and saying i don't want a man yep. then the son is there saying i don't want, want to, to be, be a man, man. yeah